I'm Janet Curry. I'm a professor of economics at Princeton University. I'm talking about inequality and mortality among children and also adults. I started studying early years in the early 90s when I realized that a lot of our social spending was on families with children and we did care particularly about families with children, but we didn't really know what the effect of that spending or those programs was. What we've discovered is that children are both peculiarly vulnerable. There's things that you can do when a child is very young that will have permanent harmful effects. There's also things that you can do that will have permanent beneficial effects. So children are, are shaped more than adults by passing events in their lives. And it's really important to have a good environment for children so that they can grow up to meet their full potential. There's been a huge amount of publicity talking about how inequality and mortality among adults is growing in the United States and now increasingly in Europe as well. If you look at mortality, mortality rates tend to be generally falling and that's partly because we have better medical care, we have other things that have improved people's health. But we have very different trends going on for older people and younger people. For older people, we have either flattening of those mortality declines, or even for some groups like middle-aged women in the US, we have increases in mortality for the first time in a century. But for children, we continue to have these very big declines in mortality and the declines are not spread evenly across groups. They're occurring more for the poorest children. Once I discovered that there were these very different trends going on for children and for adults, then the next question is why? So there was a big change in policy from 1990 up till 2010. And what it was was a huge expansion of health insurance for pregnant women and for children so that the number of pregnant women who were eligible for public health insurance went up from about 10% to 50%. A little bit later, the government started expanding health insurance for children, and again, there was a huge increase from about 10 to 20% to 40 to 50% of children being eligible for public health insurance. And so I've done some work trying to compare the US and Canada. I think that's a good comparison because there are a lot of similarities between the US and Canada, but there's a big difference in health insurance, which is that over the period that we look at, 1990 to 2010, everybody in Canada always had health insurance, whereas in the US, there are a lot of people without health insurance, but a big change in the fraction of children with public health insurance. So we look at the same age groups in Canada, and the same time period. And what we see is that, uh, first of all, Canadians have lower mortality rates at all ages than Americans, which is a little bit surprising perhaps just by itself. But what we see is that over this time period, mortality rates for children fell and approximate the low levels that you see in Canada Whereas for other groups, there's still a very big gap between mortality rates in Canada and mortality rates in the US. So in the one group where there was an expansion of health insurance, we see that health in the US uh, you know, converges to the Canadian level, whereas for the other groups, Canadians still have much better mortality rates. One of the things that we do is look at the fact that these health insurance expansions didn't happen everywhere at the same time. The expansions for pregnant women were phased in at very different times in different states. And some of the states that had the least generous programs to begin with then had the biggest increases in health insurance. So using that variation, I showed in some of my earlier work that there were immediate reductions in infant mortality and that those were associated with people getting more access to care, such as a 50% a decline in the number of people having late prenatal care. One of the things that's exciting is that those children who were covered in, the, in utero in the 1990s are now young adults. 
so we can follow those cohorts of children and then compare them to slightly older children who did not have that advantage and see what difference it makes to have eligibility for public health insurance. So the takeaway from this story is that it's very important to make sure that women and children have access to medical care. And although people may think about that as a solved problem, you give people health insurance and then they get access to care, uh, it matters how you give them access and there are little changes to the system that can make people more or less likely to take up benefits even if they have access to them. And also that the content of care matters and that policymakers should make sure that the care that's being delivered is optimized to get the best results. So one of the issues that we have is that we have a limited set of outcomes that we look at and so we have a policy and we look at the effect on those outcomes. Uh, it's a little bit like looking for a needle in a haystack. There may be many other outcomes that we're not measuring and so then we're not getting a complete picture of what the policy does. So trying to figure out what are the important outcomes and how we can measure them is a real challenge for work going forward. Thank you.